Good day, Israelites. My name is Brother Greg Qualls, and I want to welcome you to the very first edition of Talking with Israel, where I will be your host. Talking with Israel is a 15-minute conversation with like-minded Israelites and strangers about life from a biblical perspective. A gathering around the fire, if you will, where an elder Israelite, that's me, will be discussing our God and his ownership of all of his creation. Most of all, however, we'll be talking about us, people. When I say that our talks will be from a biblical perspective, Everything I say in all of our talks will be backed up by the Word of God. So during our talks, I'll be using the New American Standard Bible, backed up entirely by the King James Version. Talking with Israel is primarily an act of God. He commanded it. He said that he wanted me to reach out and change people by telling them the truth. And to do that by going back to his Word and prayerfully getting people away from the religious doctrines that the false teachers have so successfully taught, even ingrained into the people. This being our introductory program, you're probably wondering, who is this guy? Well, my name again is Greg Qualls. I was born in Philadelphia 70 years ago, this December. I currently live in Elk Grove, California. During those 70 years, I was my own ruler. I was my own God. Like most people, I did what I wanted, whenever I wanted, and did it all the way I wanted to do it. That's how most of us are, our own gods. I was introduced to Jesus Christ in the church when I was very young, seven or eight. My two older sisters, my two older brothers and I formed a group called the Crusaders for Christ. and We went around Philadelphia singing at churches. My mom made sure that I and my siblings attended Bible study, went to church, and she had us baptized. Ah, now here's my chance to talk against childhood baptisms. Baptism into Jesus Christ means you've come to know him and that you accept his ways and that you are willing to die for him. So you're baptized for the removal of past sins. Well, we were just beginning to sin. We'll call that lesson number one. Stop having your babies baptized. They are probably going to sin too. The word tells us, woe to the earth and to the sea, because the devil has come down to you having a great wrath, knowing that he has only a short time. The odds that he will get a hold of your youngster is overwhelming especially here in the 21st century. By the way, we'll talk about the seven days that God has given to humanity at a later time, but I want you to know that we are deeply into the sixth day. So I didn't know what baptism was, and neither did my siblings. By the time we were in high school, we were lusting for anything but God. We wanted drugs. We wanted sex. We lived for getting high. High school was where I started my long walk as a whoremonger. When I graduated high school in 1970, I joined the Navy and was stationed at Moffett Field, California, near Mountain View in the Bay Area. There, I continued my life of sin. In fact, I was discharged from the Navy because I was lusting for more money. I took part in a robbery, an armed robbery. My friend had gotten a gun and he had convinced me to be his driver. We were caught. Because of God, who as I look back over my life, he was and still is my protector, even when I rejected him. Because of him, I was sent to the California Youth Authorities Jail in Stockton, California, as opposed to being sent to San Quentin. While at the Youth Authority, I began my college courses there. And I left there with an early release, with a 3.96 grade point average, and with an honorable discharge from the Navy. I moved back to the Bay Area where I resumed college at Foothill Community College and at San Jose State. I was hired by IBM at their San Jose plant as a temporary employee, and I accepted their offer to become a permanent employee in 1977. And I stayed with IBM for 32 years and retired in 2009. I became a father in 1980. I wasn't married. 
In fact, at that time, when I was 27, I was convinced that I was sterile, having been a whoremonger since I was 15. I became a father again in 1983 and 1986. In 1988, I met and married my wife. We found religion and we attended the church for years where the truth was never taught. By the way, now I know that a church that holds its services on the first day of the week cannot tell the truth. Otherwise, they would have their service on the Sabbath, as the Bible instructs. Well, anyway, we had three children, and after 15 years, we got divorced. Believe it or not, my pastor from our church actually testified against me in the divorce proceedings. After the divorce, and after concluding an adulterous relationship that had led to the divorce, and after a few years of just being a drunk, I retired from IBM and moved to California. Prior to coming to California, I revisited the word without a pastor. That's when I found out about the Sabbath and a whole lot of other things that my pastor never, ever told me. Once I was settled here in California, the Lord was waiting for me. And he came to me while I was sitting on the toilet with his word, telling me what is written in Matthew 13, verse 31 kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. Right then, he showed me what life would be like in his kingdom, and right then and there, I became his. And I'm telling you the truth, for days after he spoke, I could see clouds, as if I was lifted up into the sky. Everywhere I went, I dived into his word. And let me tell you, it has power. At a later date, I'll tell you the kind of power that it had over me and may have over you. But while reading his word, he manifested in me on a spiritual level, my restoration from captivity with the revelation that I was a Hebrew. So here I am, formerly a whoremonger, a robber, an adulterer, a liar, and a drunk, reborn by the power of God 15 years ago. I've reconciled with my six children, I celebrate my nine grandkids and two great-grandkids. I was raised as a Methodist. I've been to a Pentecostal church. I've been to the Seventh-day Adventist church. I attended an evangelized Jewish church. Finally, I found the truth at the Israel of God headquartered in Illinois. They know, and now I know, that we are obviously the people described in the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. And what God describes in Deuteronomy chapter 30, he has done with me and he promises to do the same to all who return to him and obey him with all their heart and soul. He will restore you from captivity and have compassion on you. And he promises that he will gather you again from where you've been scattered due to his curse, which he set before us, along with the blessings from Mount Sinai. When he spiritually restores you, his spirit will convince your spirit that we are Hebrews. We are from the tribes of either Judah, Benjamin, or Levi, the last tribes to have been dispersed from the promised land. The Bible, from chapter 12 of Genesis until the end, is about us, God's chosen people. This, however, is not a compliment. <laughs> In the things that he wanted us to be and the things that he wanted us to do, we have completely failed our God. And we are under a curse because of that failure. Here in the United States of America are many of those Israelites living in a country that is not their own, not knowing where they're from. These Israelites are called African Americans. Most people, certainly among these Israelites themselves, presume that we're from Africa because of our colors and because we are the people described in the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy and all throughout the Bible as God's outcast people and because we have been that for thousands of years and because our twin brother Edom has convinced the world that his people are the Jews. All of this makes it impossible for us to know except by the Holy Spirit that we are the outcast Israelites and that we are from the tribes of Judah or Levi or Benjamin. So you are my audience, you and the stranger, the non-Israelite, who holds the same beliefs. 
My hope is that younger generations will tune in as well. We have a lot to teach the younger generation about biblical living. Welcome again to Talking with Israel. Talking with Israel exists to help us read and understand and do what God demands of us so that we may lead this temporary life and live forever with him. In the next episode, we'll talk about the curse we're under and who we have to blame for that curse. We'll talk about the feasts of God and they are not of the Jews. These are feasts of God. We'll talk about the Ten Commandments and the dietary law, which we should keep. And we'll talk about how to live blameless, something we all are, hopefully, striving to be. A Talk with Israel will be available on your podcasting services every Thursday at seven, 8 o'clock Eastern. That is 8 o'clock Eastern. Please join us. Please tell your friends and neighbors to join us. In the meantime, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Until next time, God bless you.